Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, UN suspends Russia from Human Rights Council. Let us try and understand what is this issue all about. First up, let's look into the context. The United Nations General Assembly has suspended Russia from the UN Human Rights Council over reports of gross and systematic violations and abuses of human rights in Ukraine. For the last couple of months, we have been discussing about Russia invasion of Ukraine. Russia has committed grave human rights violation and in a specific case where it occurred in Bucha, more than 300 civilians in Ukraine were killed. In this particular backdrop, we had United Nations resolution which wanted to remove Russia from the Human Rights Council and a resolution was passed and ultimately Russia now stands removed from this particular Human Rights Council. So where is Bucha? Bucha happens to be a town which is located about 25 km in the northwest of the capital of Ukraine and more than 300 bodies have been found in this particular town and this is also called as Bucha Massacre where killing of civilians have been undertaken by the Russian armed forces. There have been grave violations. This includes torture, mutilation, so on and so forth and there have also been instances where a comparison is drawn between the World War II and this particular instance. Number of people have voiced this as genocide. Many countries have also called this a war crime. Why? Because of the deliberate targeting civilian killings that is undertaken, which is why it is also called as war crime. In this particular backdrop, voting was undertaken in the United Nations General Assembly. Of the 193 members of the Assembly, 93 voted in favour of suspension as proposed by the United States, while 24 were against it and 58 abstentions happened, weakening the position of Russia in the international arena. Now, what is that we have to understand? What is the position of India? When it comes to several countries, several countries opposed the resolution. Why? Because they felt that independent inquiry had to be taken into picture first and then the resolution was supposed to be passed. Similarly, India also says that India abstained from this particular motion primarily because they did not follow the due procedure. So India says since the inception of the Ukrainian conflict, India has stood for peace, dialogue and diplomacy. We believe that no solution can be arrived at by shedding blood and at the cost of innocent lives. If India has chosen any side, it is the side of peace and it is for an immediate end to violence. We continue to remain deeply concerned at the worsening situation and reiterate our call for the end of all hostilities. When innocent human lives are at stake, diplomacy must prevail as the only viable option, says India. In this backdrop, let us try and understand what is this Human Rights Council. The Human Rights Council happens to be an intergovernmental body within the United Nations system which is made of 47 states responsible for the promotion and protection of all human rights around the globe. It has the ability to discuss all thematic human rights issues and situations that require its attention throughout the year and it meets at the UN office at Geneva. So what does the Human Rights Council do? It monitors the human rights violations from multiple countries and ultimately makes reasonable interventions if there are grave human rights violations. So when when we speak about human rights violations, what we require is an institution and a structure to monitor the human rights violations for which what we have is a three-step process. One is a universal periodic review, second is the advisory committee, third is the complaint procedure. What is the universal periodic review? As the very name denotes, there is the periodic review of the human rights violations. If there is a country committing the human rights violations, the same is reported to the Human Rights Council by different institutions. It can be the NGO, it can be the individuals, it can be multiple other people who are located in that country. So what would happen? Getting the human rights violations from that particular country is part of the universal periodic review. So there is equal treatment of all countries and ultimately reports coming from different sources are taken into picture for the review of human rights in that particular country. Then we also have the advisory committee. What is this advisory committee? This happens to be a think tank of the Human Rights Council. Basically, this would have all the experts and these experts will give some of the ideas with respect to how interventions can be done in that particular country. And finally, what we have is the complaints committee where 
individuals would be able to complain groups and organizations would be able to complain to the human rights council about the human right violations but do note this particular complaint should not be politically motivated it should be consistent with the charter of the united nations and this should be in line with the universal declaration of the human rights and also remember only when all the domestic remedies have been exhausted only then they can approach the complaint procedure so what do we have is a human rights council which is an intergovernmental body which has about 47 members who are the members of the council when we look at the membership what we have is a equitable geographical distribution there are about 13 seats for africa 13 seats for Asia Pacific, Eastern European countries have seven seats, Western European and others have seven seats and finally Latin America and Caribbean have about eight seats. This when we add up will come up to about 47 member states and all the members of the UNGA elect them directly individually by the secret ballot and when they get elected they become part of the United Nations Human Rights Council. So remember all in all there are about 47 members who are part of this and this is on the basis of equitable distribution. So these members who are elected in the United Nations Human Rights Council will be elected for a period of three years. So remember every country which is elected will have a term of about three years. The term of each each seat is about three years and no member can occupy a seat for more than two consecutive terms. So after they have ended up two consecutive terms, they cannot be re-elected immediately. And in the present situation, what we are looking into is in reference to Russia. Russia was elected to UNHRC when? In the year 2021. So ideally three years means by the end of December, this term would have completed. But now all of a sudden, because of the resolution, they have been removed from the United Nations HRC. So what is the procedure for the removal? According to 60 of 251, the UN General Assembly decides that the membership in council shall be open to all state members of the United Nations. When electing members of the council, member states shall take into account the contribution of candidates to the promotion and protection of human rights and their voluntary pledges and commitments made thereto. The General Assembly, by a two-third majority, of the members present and voting may suspend the right of membership in the council of a member of the council that commits gross and systematic violations of human rights. Remember, the phrase members present and voting basically means members casting an affirmative yes or a negative vote no, which means members who abstain from voting are not considered for voting. In the present situation, when we look into the voting, we look at only affirmative yes or no and abstentions are not taken into consideration for the voting. Is there an example or similar instances where countries have been removed from UNHRC? Yes. This goes back to the year 2011 where Libya was also removed from the membership back in the year 2011. Libya was suspended in 2011 because of the violence against protesters by the forces who were loyal to Gaddafi. And this also happens to be the first time where one of the permanent members has lost its membership right in the United Nations body. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this topic. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.